Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Mix. I looked at the calendar today and it is December 11th and there's no way I can let the month go by without giving you a few Christmas designs. So today I decided to kick it off with a quick five minute snowflake tutorial. Now this is one I actually went through in my Fusion 360 live class, which is my weekly online class. And I've got the link below if you want to check it out. Although it may look like there are several geometric shapes going on here, I'm going to show you how we can quickly make this design with just one tool and that's our line tool. All we need is our line tool and a few constraints and we can quickly make this design. All right, let's jump right in. We'll begin by creating a sketch on the XY plane, and I'm gonna start with a line. So L4 line, and we'll begin right at the origin, go straight up. The uh, dimension here is really not important, but let's go about 50 millimeters, and uh, we're gonna take this line and click X to make it a construction line. What is important here is that you get this vertical constraint. So if you don't see it there, go ahead and add it in in your constraints toolbar right here. All right, uh, hit escape, and then L4 line again. We're gonna start with another line right on our origin, and this time we're gonna go up at an angle and we will dimension this line so d for dimension origin here is our first click and then our second click at this point on the top left and then we're going to click again and enter 50 millimeters as our height now we're going to come in with an angle between our angled line and our vertical line so d for dimension there and then we're going to select both lines and then click the middle and then write 30 degrees as our angle there Okay, and the next part of this is really just creating a few more lines. So L for line, I'm going to create an angled line coming across. Not so much worried about the uh, angle for now. Just uh, make sure you don't get, you see how it wants to snap into a uh, perpendicular constraint there. Um, try to avoid that. If you do accidentally get those or this midpoint constraints, you can delete them. But um, we're going to try to avoid those. And then we're going to go ahead and select both of these lines. I'll hold shift and select both of them. Now I'm going to come and make them parallel by clicking on our parallel constraints here. So now they are both parallel and then so therefore if I come in and dimension one of them here and make that 45 degrees, they will both be 45. All right, next we're going to enter a dimension from the origin here. So we'll click on both of these points, the origin and the point on our line. I'm going to make this first line 10 millimeters and we're going to make the second line here to that point at 20 millimeters. All right, we've got those lines. We're gonna create a couple more lines up here. Again, I'll just create a few lines here, avoiding any constraints here. Uh, one constraint, actually, you can go ahead and um, put in right away. If you reference this line here and then start drawing it, notice you'll get that parallel constraint. So then we don't have to grab it uh, up here. Uh, it's already set. Um, and to do that, you just kind of reference it and then go back and then it tells Fusion that that's what you're trying to do. Uh, we will add one more constraint and that's our equal constraint. So I'll select both of these lines and grab my equal. And be careful, it's easy to mix up both of these, um, the parallel and the equal constraint because they look similar. All right, D for dimension and now that they are both equal and parallel, we can simply enter an angle here and both will update. So that kind of made it small a little bit. I'm just gonna move them up a little bit here. And then D for dimension, and I'm gonna make this uh, say 15 millimeters. All right, now we've got our angle and our uh, length there. We can go ahead and set a dimension from the origin here for each of those for this first one. I'm gonna go out till I get an up down dimension there. I'm gonna enter 30 millimeters, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the second one here, except this one will make 40. All right, now we're gonna take and apply a mirror to um, our lines that we've made. So we'll go to create mirror. We'll mirror both of these, the first ones we made. Um, the mirror line is going to be the center line here. And then we're gonna right click, repeat that with these other two lines here and with the mirror line being the angled line and click okay. That's basically all we need for our sketch here. And the rest of the magic will be done with our thin extrude tool. So we'll go ahead and click finish sketch, E4 extrude, grab our thin extrude, and I'm gonna go ahead and select each of these lines. I love the thin extrude tool. It really saves us time um, and not having to make profiles for everything. So it allows me just to extrude sketch lines. I'm gonna go ahead and change the wall thickness to three and the distance, I'll also make that three. You'll see how it looks here. I'm gonna change the wall location from side one to center. And there we have it, click okay. And now I'm just gonna take this. Uh, again, this doesn't look like much, but check out what happens when we create a circular pattern. So I'll go to create pattern down to circular pattern, select my body, and then my axis is going to be the Z axis here. I'm gonna go ahead and make six of these. You can go ahead and type that right in. 
click OK. And then finally, we can do a combine. So we go to modify combine. I'll just select each one of these arms here. And operation is join and click OK. And there is my snowflake. Go ahead and give this design a try on your own and feel free to play around with different shapes and patterns. You can really have a lot of fun with just simply using the line tools and combine that with your sketch constraints and you can create some very complex designs very quickly. And speaking of sketch constraints, I've got a cheat sheet below. It's a downloadable PDF that explains all the different sketch constraints. I definitely uh, recommend uh, checking it out and just keeping it by your side when you're designing. It's really gonna make your workflow super efficient. All right, guys, I will be back in a few. Huge thanks to all my Patreon supporters. If you enjoy my content and would like to support me, the link is below as well. Take care and I'll see you in a few.